I'd like to know a little bit more about how your timesheet supports CCAA, a defense contract audit agency. Well, first thing I'd mention on that is there are is a whole cottage industry of consultants and experts that make a living consulting uh, businesses on how to remain and become DCAA compliant. So um, it does require a little bit of internal training. It, no software package in its own is going to help you get there, but we do have a lot of tools that will assist you in becoming DCAA compliant. So um, the first thing I'd mention is in our system, uh, to become DCA compliant, you're going to want to make sure you lock down what people can or cannot do within standard time. And you do that as an administrator by going to the tools menu, selecting users and organization. And when you select this uh, dialog, you get a list of all your users on the left hand side here. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on a user name and scroll down to user rights. This is imperative because this is where you make the changes to a person's interface that allows them to become DCA compliant and helping them uh, get to that point. One of the main things you want to check is um, this can bypass locks. You're going to unselect that because you do not want to allow someone to bypass a lock. In addition to that, DCA is very clear. They want only the employee to enter their time. No one else should be entering time on the employee's behalf. So you're going to want to make sure you uncheck this dialog box that says you cannot enter employee uh, time for other employees. Additionally, there's a third very important requirement. It's found down here near the bottom. If you make a change to your timesheet, DCAA wants you to um, notate and document why you made that change. So you're going to want to uncheck this box as well that allows you to um, make changes without putting a note in the system. If you uncheck this box, it'll force your employees to document why they make those changes. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to go back here to my timesheet. And I'm going to go ahead and click on, let's say, this six hours of time right here. And I want to change that to, let's just say, seven hours. So I go to change it, and immediately the dialog box pops up asking me to document my changes. So I'm just going to say something very generic. Now, this is where training is important, because your employee could type anything they want in this box, but you're going to want to make sure you're clear they need to document exactly why they made this change. Right. Okay. In addition to that, after you put in your own time and document your own time, you want to be able to lock the system down and prevent people from making changes into the future. So what you do is you go to the Tools menu. As an administrator, you can choose Approve Time and Expenses. And right here, there's a little button in the bottom left corner that says Lock Date Range. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and say I want to lock everybody in my system from, let's say, February 1st through, I don't know, let's just choose February 15th. Then I say lock the date range, and when I do that, it's going to lock down the whole system out into the future so no one can make changes uh, to the system after the fact. Excellent. So there's a document on our website that you can visit, um, and it'll uh, explain a little bit about how standard time helps you become DCA requirement, and, and um, it'll probably help answer some of those questions for you. Very good. All right. Any other questions? I think that was about it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you.